I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to fill an image with shards of broken glass. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like. And you can even subscribe for new and exciting videos every week, five times a week. With all that, let's jump into what we have here. Now I do have my subject and my background all prepped and ready as today we will only be covering this glass shards effect. However, if you like something, um, give me a shout in the comments and I'll be more than happy to cover it. As for the resources, you can find everything you need down in the description. So first, we are going to start with some preparation work. You'll want a nice sized broken glass texture or a stock photo like what we have here. We are going to extract various pieces of glass from the texture, copying those pieces of glass onto their very own layer. Use whatever your preferred method of extraction might be. Mine is the pen tool. It does create an overly smooth edge, but you can always rough it up or perfect that edge later on. So we are just getting the basic shapes of glass for now. You want to do as many as you have the patience for, and in all varying shapes and sizes, from itty bitty little pieces of glass to some larger boys. You can always extract more shards later, and you can even split your already extracted glass into smaller pieces. Just get yourself a good amount to start off with. Once you have all the glass layers done, we want to drag and drop all of those layers underneath our subject layer and start arranging them. You can arrange these glass pieces however you'd like. Place them around and try to strategically place certain shapes next to each other. Shapes and pieces that complement each other and look as if maybe they have broken away from each other. Adjust the angle of the glass using the transform controls and don't forget you can also right click, flip horizontally or vertically. Keep arranging and masking until you are happy with the flow and fit of things. If you have a piece of glass that is particularly chunky, a great way to further refine and shape that piece is by adding a layer mask and then masking using a hard round brush, or better yet, a textured brush of some sort. Either way, if you are using a tablet, make sure the uh, transparency pressure is off. You want a solid black brush here. Pressure for size can, um, of course, stay on and can, in fact, become fairly useful. You can create further cracks in the glass, holes, other details that will give the glass a bit more uh, realism. You really want to think about how glass shatters and cracks, and avoid really big chunks, as they tend to look a bit copy-pasted. After all, they technically were. Once you are happy with everything, this is entirely optional, but you can add your subject's reflection to the glass. Just copy your subject and all of its layers, if any, and merge them together. Then clip that copy into one of the surrounding pieces of glass. I also like to set the layer mode to screen and lower the opacity to roughly 50 to 60%, lower or higher depending on your desired effect. You do want to keep in mind that technically it's the back of your subject that will be reflecting in the glass. Try and position it so none of the front features of the model are showing. You don't want her face or anything showing in these back pieces. If you do happen to have a photo of the subject's back, then that would prove to be wonderfully useful here. We are going to group all of the glass into their very own, naming it glass shards, or group one depending on what kind of person you are. Let's go ahead and set that group to screen and collapse it. Next, we are going to start giving our glass a bit more life and even a bit of color. Go ahead and copy your whole uh, glass shard group and merge the copy. Right click, merge group. Now let's create a color fill layer, which is right down here. Any color works for now. We are going to control click or command click, if you're on a Mac, on the merged glass. This will create a selection in the shape of the glass. 
Go to your fill layer, delete the default layer mask, and create a new mask. The mask will autofill to the selection. Then you can go ahead and delete the glass shards copy. This color fill layer allows us to both add color and opacity to our glass shards. If you want the glass to be somewhat opaque, keep that opacity turned on up, or add some transparency with a lower opacity level. Same with the color. You get not only color, but brightness control. And most importantly, you can change this at any point. Blue glass sounds excellent now, but maybe six hours from here, red glass sounds a bit better. That is why this is a better option than just changing the color of the glass layers themselves with something like hue saturation. The main downside is you kind of have to edit this mask every time you add, move, or delete a piece of glass. But it's just a matter of control clicking the new shard of glass and masking in some color or deleting a piece of glass and masking out that old background. And if you want 100% clean and clear glass, you can of course skip this step altogether. Moving on, we are going to clip a new layer into the glass group, keeping it set to normal. What we want to do is create some reflections on the edges of the glass. You can do this with a simple hard round brush, or again, if you have a brush with a bit of texture, that will work even better. Think about how the piece of glass is angled. If it's slanted more towards the camera, or us the viewer, then it's likely to have a thick white edge. If it's pointed away or down, then it might be uh, less likely. It can be easy to go overboard with this when you are zoomed in and painting, so keep zooming out and checking things, keeping the reflections and angles in mind. We don't want a complete solid white border around the glass or anything that looks like a stroke layer effect. We want to preserve uh, both detail and texture as much as possible. So if a flat white uh, color is a little too strong and you just want to enhance the reflections that are already there, you can create and clip a new layer into the glass group, setting it to overlay, bringing the opacity down to around 50% to cut out the harshness. Using the same brush as before, painting in your reflections. You can even use black to paint in some shadows if you find that you need to. This will of course change not only from glass piece to glass piece, but also from image to image. Finally, with our edges all done, we can add our final overall lighting. I like doing this on a clipped layer set to overlay and lowering the opacity to around 70%. On this layer, we are going to paint white and black with a big old fluffy brush, set to a low flow rate so we can build the light and shadows up slowly. You can also experiment with different layer modes like soft light or color dodge. It's always good to flip through them and see if you don't stumble upon a killer combo. Overlay and soft light can easily be overused, so be sure to get a feel for the other layer modes as well. With your glass layers all done, however, you can group them into one final glass group. The colorful layer and all. And really, that covers the main glass effect, but we have a few extra tidbits that are fun to play with. Here, we have a piece of glass right over our model's face, done the exact same way as our earlier glass. We have the glass layer here with a layer mask that I used to further refine the shape, then a colorful layer set to the same dark blue. Next, our edges layers both are set to soft light here, but it's otherwise the same exact technique, bringing out these lovely edges here. And finally, a lighting layer for some larger areas of light, giving it a bit of depth, making it a, a little less flat. Now, what we're going to do is take a copy of our subject and clip it into the glass here, similar to earlier with the background glass. And we are going to set the layer to lighten and bring down the opacity to around 70%. The order in which you place the subject layer will vary. I liked how it looked uh, wedged between my two edges layers here, but it will all just depend. Now we are going to just slightly enlarge our subject and put them offset just a bit. Basically, we are creating an almost magnifying effect, like the piece of glass is passing her face and distorting it. You can also essentially adjust the opacity of the uh, glass or the see-throughness of the glass by adjusting the opacity of the copied subject's layer. Cranking it all the way up to 100% will give you the appearance of a 100% uh, 
clear glass. I like having a bit of a tint, hint the 70% opacity. Next, we are going to close that group on up and add some tiny little specks of broken glass. There are a couple of ways to do this. If you have the patience of a saint, you can pen tool them just like we did with the larger glass pieces. You can also just paint them in one by one with a hard round brush. Or you can create a super simple spec brush or shard brush from any number of pre-made brushes you might already have, which is exactly what I've done here. This is actually a rock brush, but with a bit of brush setting finessing, we get these nice little glass pieces. You can also do similar settings to what you see here to the default hard round brush, though it's best to choose something with a bit of texture, which is why this rock brush worked out so, so well. See, rocks work great because you can also just place large white rocks and they turn into pieces of glass very nicely. I love a multi-use brush. I do have a very old, not super high-res spec brush that I used to use for this effect back in the day. Like I said, it's old, but it's free and might come in handy as I did used to use it quite a bit. I will put the link down in the description along with a bunch of other goodies that you might want to check out. Now to finish up our front glass, I am just going to throw a few copies of this larger piece of glass down below and in the corner here, merging the group as I'd like them to be opaque anyway, and of course hiding that subject layer inside. I'm going to then add a slight blur to the glass in the corners using the Filter Blur Gallery Field Blur filter, which is my personal favorite way to add blur to most objects, especially if I'm just adding some quick depth of field. And to finish off these glass shards, we are going to add a pop of light and color with some razor sharp lens flares. This color is 100% up to you. I'm going with a nice orange as I have some fire accents in the final piece. I do recommend using a few shades of the same color or even mix and matching colors as um, you can get something a bit less flat and a bit more vibrant. So on a layer set to screen, slowly build up that light across the edges of the individual pieces of glass, really focusing on the place where we painted in our white highlights. You want a nice soft round brush set to a very low flow rate, 1 to 10% really. If you are using a mouse and not a pen, um, I would go for that 1% for sure. Then you can finish things up with some light blooms on selected edges of glass. You can paint them with a soft round brush or bust out some pre-made light flare brushes. I do like to add a slight blur to brushes like that um, to soften them up just a bit. And I think we're done here. I'm going to flick on my super quick fire accents. I had to fight my natural inclination to add blood to the tongue as we are keeping it YouTube friendly here after all. And so I settled for flames instead, I guess. A bit of a fire and ice situation. And with that, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Because I like doing what I like doing, but I really like doing what you like. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.